everyone. We're back. Episode two with your boy Nug, uh, Chasing Goals podcast. We're going for that 200 kilogram deadlift. We're going for that seven minute or sub seven minute 2K run. So yeah, 659, 658 would be the goal. 650 would be nice, <laughs> but I doubt that it's going to happen. Um, and what we're going to do today is just recap on this week's uh, training sessions, how it all went. I've got a few videos up, so we'll go through some deadlift form. Just, oh, just how the deadlifts are progressing um, and a few other videos that we that was taken uh, during the week. And I'll give a rundown of kind of what I did with my training week. Um, so currently... Uh, or this week, I only did one upper body and two lower body sessions. Um, I'll probably add an extra upper body. So do two and two for the first, you may maybe five, next five or six weeks. And then I might back it off and do uh, just the one upper body session, try to lose a bit more weight. We're going to get a little bit, a little bit down. As I said in the last podcast, I'm currently about, you know, I was 94 kilos, um, I weigh myself uh, at the end of this week. And I'm about 92.5, so a little bit of a drop, which is good. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll give a little rundown of how we went. Starting off with Monday was just an easy session. Just um, had a bit on on the Monday and the Tuesday, so we just did what I could. Uh, just so it was just a nice, easy 40 minute bike ride. The weather was terrible in Melbourne, um, and I didn't want to go outside in the rain, which is. Uh, yeah, pretty soft. So, <laughs> yeah, so a 40 minute bike ride on Monday. Um, and then in the Tuesday, I had our uh, leg session. So, this is where I've been doing my heavy deads. Uh, are we doing legs, heavy deads? Sure. Uh, but that's kind of when I do my heavy dead session. So, we'll take a look at some of these deadlifts and where we were at uh, during this, this time and how they felt. So, the first one here looks about, it was just a warm up. I guess it was. Um, yeah, probably 90 kilos, just the first one. So just, or might be a bit more actually. It looks like it might be even 100. And, what do we got there? 25, 45, 90, about 110 by the looks of things. Uh, so just a little warm up. Here we go. We've got no, no straps on, overhand grip. It was just warming up. Deep breath in. So even though that's quite light, um, I'm still going through. Uh, I'm ta- I'm taking each rep as if it was it was heavy. So I'm I'm bracing. I'm filling up the filling up my stomach, filling up the air, filling up my lungs with air, bracing that core, pushing out against. If I was wearing a belt, I'd be pushing out against that belt. Um, and that was just the three reps. So just just warming up on that one, which felt pretty good. So that was one ten. So it looks like this one's going to be a one forty uh, deadlift. So see how we go here. Just moving across now. I've I've got the straps here, so I'm doing overhand grip. Um, I could probably do underhand, but I just liked how the overhand grip feels. Um, you could obviously, well, not obviously, but most people would under like so one hand underneath, one hand over. You could probably hold more if you just did the double over overhand. I guess until you start maybe um, doing the thumb lock and that sort of thing. But if you're just doing normal double overhead grip, that can be a bit challenging. So I've got the straps here. I've also got a bent finger on my left hand, uh, which makes my left grip a little bit weaker. So uh, here we go. So 140, again, just progressing up into our couple of top sets of 160. Uh, same deal. I've got the belt on. The belt, I need a new belt. The belt doesn't even fit me. I've blown out too much. So <laughs> it was good when I was 85 kilos, but now I'm at 94 or 92 and a half. Uh, yeah, she wasn't fitting. So here we go. So same deal. Bracing, obviously a little bit harder. Still moving good. Um, I, I do notice when I the weight starts to get a little bit heavier, I um, lift my 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 bum comes up a little bit fast, um, but so you can see there that if I stop it right here, I am a little I'm almost all the way up with my legs and I'm still sort of bent over uh, lifting that bar up. So that's the one thing I can probably um, get better at is trying to stay down in that deadlift 
before I lift my hips too high. Um, but that happens to me when I get uh, when it starts getting a little bit heavy. So um, I'm definitely going to put in some low, uh, so like elevated deadlifts. So I'll be above the ground. So I'll be I'll be having to get deeper into my um, deadlift. So which means I'll have to improve that leg drive. So hopefully that'll that'll help and that'll counter that sort of movement. So, but still pretty good uh 140 is moving pretty quick so let's move on to i think this will be the top set yeah this is a top set of 160 um it's actually felt pretty good so as i said i haven't done much heavy lifting for a while so 160 this is probably the heaviest i've lifted lifted for five six months maybe even longer so here we go let's see how we go here so bracing hard trying to keep my bum down really try to focus on keeping my bum down here but as you can see, it still comes up a little bit early. But and I'm, I'm, I'm working quite hard, like quite hard there on that third rep. But um, yeah, still pretty happy with that. So three at one sixty. Uh, we'll move on to the next deadlift. I think they've got one more. Obviously, I'm a little bit more fatigued to this last one. Uh, but still, it felt pretty good. So you got two two sets at the the top weight here. Here we go. How are we going here? So brace the core. It's kind of pulling me a little bit forward, trying to keep those lats as tight as I can. Squeeze those shoulder blades. Big deep breath. <laughs> Doesn't. It's pulling me a little bit forward, uh, which is probably why my hips are coming up a bit earlier. So I've really got to work on getting back or well, keeping those legs down, driving up and keeping tight through the back. Let's watch that one more time. So set up, got my straps, got the belt on. I didn't even wear, to be honest, I didn't even wear the belt because the belt wasn't working. <laughs> because of, as I said, uh, yeah, need to lose some weight. So we're crunching down, starting off well, keep it nice and tight. But yeah, so what happens, I'm losing my form forward. So I'm, I'm, I'm dropping down. So you imagine the, the bar's heavy. So I'm, it's pushing me forward, which is making my hips raise too quick. And it's put me into a, like this weird posse where I'm, I'm pretty much just uh, almost stiff legged deadlifting these this deadlift at the end here. So uh, yeah, try got to work on that. That second one was a little bit better. Let's slow this third one down. So yeah, same deal. I'm getting pulled forward because it's quite heavy, um, and I'm just it's mostly just a, a stiff legged deadlift to get it up, but still not too bad. Obviously, as always, you can always uh, pick out what places where you you can get better. So two at one six, uh, two by three at one sixty. There were the top sets, so not too bad. Getting better uh, every week, which is good. Um, so I might do uh, one sixty five next week and see how we're feeling. Um, and yeah, we'll move on to the next exercise that we did. Uh, this is all. So after I do a heavy set, I like to still want to keep. Um, as well as all these goals that I'm doing, I still want to keep quite like explosive as I get older. I'm um, 30, turning 31 now. So uh, it's always good to practice some uh, jumping. So here we go into our jumping here. Uh, that last video wasn't anything. So uh, these are drop jumps. So the progressions have been uh, I started four by five on the jumps. And the next progression was five by five. So I've just upped the volume there um, to make it. Yeah, obviously the progress. So you're going four by five. You just you just adding more volume five by five into the jumps. And then for this week, uh, I did four back to four by five, but I added the height on which I fell. So um, that's just another way to add a progression um, when you're doing your jumping. So it doesn't always have to go up by uh, reps and that sort of thing. And how many sets you do? If you if you add a height, you're obviously absorbing more force on the way down. You get you you're picking up more speed, so you're absorbing more force. Uh, and then, yeah, jumping. So here we go. So what I'm doing here, yeah. So I'm hopping off the, hopping off the, uh, hopping off the box, touching the ground, and I'm trying to jump pretty far. Well, pretty much as fast as I can. Uh, I use a gauge. There's a roof where the gym is, so I try and touch that roof. But yeah. So it's not too bad for uh, if I lose some weight and keep this that that strength. We should be getting a little bit higher jumps, um, but uh, not too bad. So here you can see here, stepping down, 
quick tap and throw your arms up. So when you when you jump, you're gonna throw those arms up, trying to touch the ground. And as I said, we're trying to get that quick uh, contact with the ground, and we went from there. So four by five there. I think it's gonna take one more video at a different different angle or no, it didn't take another video. So we'll move on to this to the next one here, which was the oh actually yeah here we go. It's just a side angle, same thing. So you can just so you can see how fast that transition from the ground to the to so from the box to the ground. Um, so you can time that. It, it might be here we go. Step down. Oh, hang on. Sorry there, the video's cut off. But we'll watch this one more time. So it's a step down, quick touch, jumping as high as you can. Uh, what you should try to remember is. Um, yeah, that, that 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 quick touch on the ground. So if you want if you if you want that fast touch, you do that quick. You could sorry the quick ground touch and jump up in the air. If you're wanting a longer, um, let's say you just want to jump as high as you can, you'd probably want to take longer on the ground to get more of that force production and to jump higher. So work out which one you want to do and then um, go from there. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the to the next one. These are the ATG split squats. So as I mentioned last week, um, uh, this program has been... Uh, the, sorry, that didn't... Uh, my phone's too too heavy on the iCloud, so I'm going to get... <laughs> I've got to take some stuff off there. Um, but yeah, got some ATG split squats in there. As I said, the uh, program is influenced a little bit by um, Ben Patrick and the Knees Over Toes guy. So uh, because I've had bad knees in the past, uh, I had surgery on my knee... Um, and I had some chronic pain for three, four years in there. So I've been doing um, a lot of that knees over toes stuff and it's really helped over the last year. Pretty much got rid of that knee pain that I've had for years. So I'm just keeping that in the in the program uh, just for the longevity of yeah, of my training. Um, here we go. I'll move over onto this one here. Oh, this was the on the next day. So that'll do for Tuesday. So all going well, feeling feeling really good with the um, deadlifts. Um, and then I didn't do a cardio session that day. On Wednesday, we moved to an upper body. Um, so pretty well, the upper body session was... I'll just have a look here. What did we get to? So always do a sled walk uh, to start the session uh, again. Uh, knees over toes guy Ben Patrick they, they, they do that in their session so I started off with a five minute walk doing an uh, incline bench press uh, four by fives so trying to make it pretty heavy um, uh, neutral grip trying to get that big stretch on your pec whilst you do it just uh, added an incl a little bit of an incline that was my progression uh, this week so felt good then I moved into some pull up holds so pull so instead of when you're doing the pull up and just popping up and then getting down, popping up, you're kind of missing that up the up the top. You're missing that uh, that squeeze, or you 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 just you just kind of up the top. It's obviously the easiest part, so you're not really doing anything at the top. We do you're doing something, but um, what I've added here into this what and it's just something that I haven't done before, so I just wanted to change up a little bit. Is at the top of that pull up is just squeeze for three seconds one two, three, and then pop down. And then you back up. One, two, three. Um, makes it super tough. Uh, obviously, you're not going to get as many uh, reps as if you're just pumping out pull-ups super fast. But uh, it's been it's been feeling good. So I've uh, been doing four by... Start off four by fours. Then I uh, did four by four, four, five, five. And then this week, it was four by five, 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 five. Or four by five. <laughs> so... Yeah, so that's going well. So um, I'll, I'll get I'll get a video of that next week, um, and then we got some ball throws. So I've got those on the video here. So I'll get the ball throws up here uh, if I can find it. <laughs> here we go. Uh, so pretty well. Once again, always like to put a bit of speed work into my training and some explosive power. So uh, have the ball on the so lay down on the mat or on the ground, um, ball in hand. So you're pushing the ball like a chest pass as high as you can. Um, I like to do a little throw at the start. Usually if you have a partner, it's good for them just to drop it and then you can just explode it up super fast. But if you don't have a partner, 
as you can see here, I'll show you on this video, but I do a little push just so the ball kind of goes up and just so I'm catching it, I'm decelerating it and then I'm exploding it back up super fast. So um, yeah, still trying to get keep that explosive power in there. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're playing footy or any sort of sport, it's good to put these sort of stuff in there. You know, if you're playing AFL footy, that's something like a don't argue. Um, yeah, it's just, just great for just great for power. So here we go. I'll, I'll move this thing out of the way. Hang on. All right, I'll start this again, just so you can see from the start. So you can see here, I do a little throw up in the air, push down and drive up. So a little throw up in the air, trying to throw that ball as high as you can. There's three, driving up. You don't want to go too heavy on these, so you really want to be, it's, all, it's about that power, so you don't want to be slow and barely making off your chest. So I'm using a five kilo ball there. Um, almost got squashed by the ball there, but <laughs> yeah, try not to do that. Um, but yeah, so that was that. There's, and then what do we got? I got some rotator cuffs in there. I'm pretty sure I got that on film as well here. Um, same deal, just stuff that, you know, you should be doing or you, know, you don't have to do it, but I like to be doing now, um, as I'm getting a little bit older, um, so the progression here was I started with a seven and a half kilo that I haven't done before. I've been doing five kilos. So I did seven and a half kilos for as many as I could. And I've dropped down. It's a little drop set here to the five kilos. Um, was What did we get? We got three. Yeah, three by about 10 total. So five and five or five and six. Um, but see here, so one arm behind your bum here. Um, the, you, know, you want to keep your knee, the knee that your elbow is resting on wants to be stiff. So you want to be moving because that will help. So what you want to do is keep your knee bent and then you want to drop your knee down or sorry, drop your elbow down, internal rotate your shoulder and then bring it back up. Um, yeah, I've been finding this has been really good help for my shoulders. Um, haven't been getting any shoulder pain. So um, yeah, so that that's going well. You can see here, um, it's just, just another good little exercise for your shoulders. Um, I'm just gritting here. No. <laughs> yeah, I had to, couldn't even get it up there. So that's probably, I should have just given it up then, but yeah. So at least I went to failure there. Sometimes it's good to go to failure. Um, so yeah, there we go. That was the shoulder, a little shoulder one. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, that's the same one. And then the last video is... Might be some bicep curls or oh, it's just a straight hammer curl. So this is the last one of our uh, our upper body session for that for that day. Just a little bit of uh, it's just a hammer curl. So three by eight, just straight up, squeeze the biceps. Um, yeah. So, so here we go. Probably not. You know, everyone likes bi to do their biceps. So I'm doing a little drop set here. I think I started with the seventeen and a halves. Um, and then move down to 12 and a halves and just just going, just getting a real good pump in there. Um, obviously, <laughs> for what we're, we're, what we're trying to achieve at the moment, the 2K, these, these aren't essential, but, you know, it's fun to train your biceps. <laughs> um, that, that, was, that was Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday in the books there. Didn't do a cardio session on the Wednesday um, oh, actually, yeah, I went home. Sorry, yes, I did. I went home that day. I've got these flat uh, running shoes that I'm wearing, just trying to, um, for your feet. I've been listening to a bit of the, the Power Project with Mark Bell and that sort of thing, and they're talking about a lot of uh, flat shoes and how that is, it's good for your foot health and your foot strength and that sort of thing. Um, so just went for a little 15-minute run, tested it out. <clears throat> felt felt weird because you've obviously with your flat shoe, you've got to, uh, adjust where you're landing on on the foot. Um, so I actually got had quite tender. Uh, what they call it the soleus, soleus. I call it. <laughs> I was doing. I was reading the book for years, and I was calling it the soleus. Apparently, it's called the soleus. So that made me feel silly, didn't it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so just a little 15 minute run. That felt good. Uh, Thursday had a rest day, leg day, and then I moved on to Friday, and we did. Um, is where I got back into th more into the running. So it was a leg day. I'll just take you quickly through that what I did on the, the leg day. Um, where am I? So pretty well. 
Here we are. So we started off with the uh, Peterson step up and the tibialis raise as a little warm up. So once again for the knee health um, and you know, uh, the tibialis raise great for shin splints for your knees and that sort of thing. So give those a go. I'll, I'll, I'll film this session this week. Oh, sorry, next week um, for for us for the next week's recap. Then I had a uh, the wedge. So it's just a, a squat, but on the foot wedge. So just it just makes you. Yeah, you know, easier uh, range of motion. Um, I'm pausing down the bottom, so it's probably a paused squat right down the bottom. So you're not getting that that bounce down the bottom. We we're pausing at the bottom, um, and what did we we did 80 kilos four by five on that, so that felt good. This once again got some speed work in there, so got some hops in there four by five on the hops. I'll get I'll get a full video of this next week. Uh, Jefferson curl, uh, and then we had some. Look, a jump and a sideways pre- uh, sideways push off. So again, work on that speed, and then some sled runs as well on the Friday. So uh, I'll get I'll get some good videos there next week, so we can see how that's going. Oh, I can see some of those videos and how I kind of perform them and the form I'm kind of using. Um, but yeah, and then, and then on the on the Friday night, same deal was in the was in the flat the flat shoes. Um, so I did some more uh, high intensity running. So it was six sets of two minutes on and one minute off uh running so that was that was great uh i blew probably not where i wanted to be but uh with the new shoes and it was a little bit hilly like so it wasn't flat i was getting roughly 440 to 450 meters for that two minutes so um not ideal you probably want i probably want to be getting around 600 meters uh closer to when we're starting uh, maybe even a bit bit more for a two minute run. So uh, yeah, so that that's so got quite a bit of quite a bit of growth and improvement to do on that. Um, and then finally on the Saturday, I had just did a long, slow zone one heart rate forty minute run. So keeping it keep my heart rate around that one forty six. Well, I think it, I think the zone one for me is about one forty to one fifty two. But I, yeah, I was averaging around that one forty six to one forty eight. 40 minutes, um, the K an hour was about 607 um, kilometers, so 607 minute Ks. Um, so yeah, that was just good, just same deal, we're just that doing that zone one heart rate, uh, trying to improve, improve my lung capacity uh, and get, get better endurance for that 2K run that's coming up. So yeah, that's that was the week, week in review, uh, everything's going well, going to get some more runs in. Uh, next week, try, try to move it up to three sessions a week. And what you don't want to do is when you're coming off not doing much running, um, is going you know just go from nothing into <clears throat> five runs a week or six runs runs a week because um, you might hurt yourself or you might <clears throat> get a bit sore or that sort of thing. So yeah, two runs like uh, this week. I might try to get three runs maybe next week. Uh, starting some basketball this uh, sorry next week. So. Yeah, we'll go from there. We'll, we'll touch base next Friday or next Saturday and we'll just update on how things going. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time on the Chasing Goals podcast. Let's go.